if you have a one-man engineer squad, it'll repair a vehicle at the exact same speed as a three-man engineer squad. It's different for building. I know a one-man engineer squad, for example, will take a lot longer to build a base building or a bunker or a mine or anything like that than a three-man engineer squad. I don't know if that carries over to charismatic engineers and a five-man squad would be faster than a three-man squad. I haven't really tested it, so I'm not sure. He also did get bars, so I need to make a choice right now if I want to go either tier one, tier two, tier three, which is very powerful, but a little bit less so against armor. And the reason for that is tier three isn't really good against Shermans and especially not against Pershings. And it's decent against Calliope's. It's better than tier two against Calliope's. But my pack is cut, and that really sucks. I don't think I have one. Oh, I do have one. I was very lucky that I built this other pack, and I'm also very lucky that he's going to hit a mine right here, and I'm going to be able to kill him. That was a very fortuitous event. I need to move this Volk squad in. However, I do have my Volks all the way on his side, and he is forced to retreat. MG tearing up completely. 17 kills already, and we're only 13 minutes into this game. Completely overpowered, but that's not the point. I also did wire up over here like I mentioned earlier and I did mine right here. If his infantry wants to come in without cutting that wire, if he just right clicks on this point for example, they're going to come right past that mine, they're going to hit it, I'm moving my pack back. Always if your pack gets decloaked by your opponent or if you're moving it and you need to move quickly, always decloak it. If your opponent decloaks it and you're still cloaked in the interface, it's going to move at cloak speed even though your opponent can see it and shoot at it. And that's really counterproductive in the grand scheme of things. Oh no, am I going to lose my Minesweeper? No, he'll be okay. And I'm also getting Vet 2 on infantry, which is kind of funny. Relic changed the... Re they interchanged Vet 1 and... Er, sorry, Vet 2 and Vet 3, giving Vet 2 the 20% health and Vet 3 the elite armor. That was good in technical practice, but doesn't really hold up in execution. The reason for this is Elite Armor does absolutely nothing to help against vehicles. Elite Armor helps against small arms and is detrimental against snipers and flamethrowers because flamethrowers ignore it and snipers never miss targets with that are wearing Elite Armor. But vehicles on the other hand oh, what's that? I mean, my, I mean, there's lots of mines right here, man. But vehicles he's actually trying to throw a grenade I think yes he is and hopefully all I changed his mind because I am moving oh I can get it. and I dodged back into it that was a little bit unfortunate anyways what was I saying something about uh, I'll think of it. oh yeah elite armor and vehicles elite armor doesn't help at all against vehicles rather yeah Bad dodge, I noticed that. Rather, it only helps against small arms. However, the 20% extra health definitely helps against vehicles because it makes it harder for vehicles to kill your infantry. So instead of making Vet 2 a situational upgrade that you want to get against heavy infantry and not want to get against fast vehicles, they turn it into something that you'll want to get no matter what because, I mean, 20% 20, 20 extra health, that's going to help against vehicles that will of course help against infantry. It really helps against anything your opponent can throw at you. It kind of makes Vet 2 a no-brainer, at least if you're playing a decently drawn-out game and you don't really need to worry too much about, about what you're spending your resources on. I threw Assault Grenades right there. I usually don't use them, however, he was in a very, very powerful position right here. and. The main benefit of throwing assault grenades is you force your opponent to move. You force your opponent to change position, and if your opponent is moving, he is less accurate. If he's running backwards, his, all of his units aren't actually shooting, which is another huge bonus. You're doing more damage than he is going to be doing, and you're putting him out of his comfort zone. You're making him micro, and that means he's taking focus off say macroing up, making more units, or maybe capping around the map, or laying mines. He's actually spamming a ridiculous amount of mines. I made mines everywhere. Mine there, mine there, two mines here. I don't even know which ones are MA mines. I think the small health bars are MA mines and the big ones are non-MA mines. But a ridiculous 
ridiculous amount of mines, which is good. However, he's kind of putting him in weird spots. You'll notice he's really banking on me trying to recap this point, which I might do, but it's a lot of resources to spend to potentially maybe kill one squad. I don't even know if he's actually... I'm actually going to trip it. I don't think I have... No, I still have my mind speaker. He's just chilling there. That's something I need to improve and something that you can always yes, do a little bit better. If you have a mind sweeper, patrol them around the outskirts of your territory, especially red cover. Red cover is a very popular mine location just because vehicles will prefer red cover because they gain speed bonuses on red cover because red cover is usually placed on roads and you really want red cover to move faster. And... So that thought, we have an engagement. I am going to leave my MG, which is... He's going to hop in this building, which isn't a bad idea. I don't think I have a mortar. I should be here. I'm actually going to Tier 4. And the reason I'm going Tier 4, I usually don't go Tier 4, but Tier 4 is almost a necessity against... Oh, no, I missed the Instagib sniper. Yeah, my MG... Wait, no, maybe I killed him. Does he even have... No, I'm tripping up. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, I think I just killed a full health, like, rifle squad. I think it was a Lissons rifle squad. Just in the middle of nowhere. And this MG with 28 kills. So ridiculous. I actually threw a grenade and got lucky that he didn't move. And I really shouldn't be engaging on this side. You want to engage this house on either this end right here or this end over here. If you engage, I'll try to twist it. If you engage on... If you engage on this side, there are five windows, that means five people shooting out. If you engage on these sides, there's only two, that means two people shooting out, that means you see less damage and deal a lot more damage. Furthermore, notice he actually got... Why did he get a recon? Interesting. I actually don't know much about the recon Greyhound. That might actually be what he's spamming and maybe he's good. They might get into something like that. I don't know. I haven't really used him, so I don't really know. I am also stocking up on my Shreks. You see I have one on both these squads. You never really you don't really want to get two on any Panzer Shrek squad because it greatly increases the drop rate. And a Panzer Shrek in the hands of Wehrmacht infantry, especially when bedded, is ridiculously deadly and not something you want to give your opponent. Anyways, I did go tier four. I usually don't go tier four, but against Armor Company it's almost a necessity because Calliope is pretty much counter, sorry, uh, I got an itch. Calliope is pretty much counter everything in tier 2 that you could possibly use to counter Calliope's and also to counter the Pershing and any Shermans. They can, you can actually see in the Fog of War packs by looking for the green cover, so you can barrage them without even knowing where they are exactly. You can barrage the, wait, here it is, here it is, oh, no, next shot. Keep a close look on the sniper, it's going to get shanked very, very rapidly. If he shoots, he shoot again, sniper. Yay, okay. I'll hold off on my strategic analysis. Look at this. Four men, five men. Wait for it, wait for it. Bam! Two shots dead. And, yep, MG is overpowered with army items. Pretty obvious. And, yeah. I was, I actually didn't see him die. I just saw the plus 19 experience pop up. And I was kind of incredulous because I was so surprised that that actually happened. But anyways, uh, what I was talking about with Tier 4, Tier 4 is you get in an awkward position as terror late game against armor. And the reason for this is you don't really have much in the way of AT. You don't have storms, which fill the role of anti-Calliope forces. And I actually have a terror officer because I watched Nystrom and a few other people use terror officers so amazingly and I was going to use it to counter the sniper but then the sniper died. So I figured hey I'll use it to counter AT guns once my KT hits the field and I don't think I even used it once for that. So this was kind of a fail and now that apparently it, they, it was, they were either stealth nerfed in the last patch or there's a new bug and they don't have their ridiculous detection radius that allows them to detect snipers before snipers can detect them. Which is good because terror officers are pretty much overpowered, or they at least were overpowered and probably still are overpowered because the firestorm and the fact that they can take like 18 billion mines without dying 
makes them pretty dang cost effective. I actually see a mine right there, but I don't know if I know this because this monster is going to die. And my cast said, oh no, run away. And I actually, okay, my medic bunker has almost gained a man. I am now saving up a little bit for the KT. And, okay, that was a little bit of overkill. I think I maybe was aiming for something that wasn't the mine. But if I really just used a, I think it's 65 munitions, ability to kill a 25 munitions mine, that's not really economical. But I am expecting the Calliope, and I know, I know AFK Ninja is just waiting for the Calliope. Like that is the one thing. I actually did, oh, I missed this. I did manage to defuse all these mines over here, which is one of the risks of placing mines so close to enemy territory. When your opponent has a minesweeper and being un unable to defend them if your opponent decides to sweep the mines. I am... I have a decent a decent force at this time. Vet 1. Vet 1 tanks, probably the best upgrade you can possibly get in the entire game. Really something you want. And in terms of map control, I have had a fairly solid hold on the map the entire time. The only time my opponent really had much in the way of, hmm, I'll talk about that grenade in a second to remember that, but the only time my opponent really had superior map control to me was when he pushed me off on this right hand side. What I want to point out about that mine right here, AFK Ninja, he noticed that I had been fairly reliably dodging his mines whenever he throw them into buildings and a risky but fairly powerful thing to do in that situation is to throw a grenade at the doorway at the entrance 